Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In the previous part, we talked about three population attributes. Now we'll take up one more and that is called population density. Population density means number of organisms of a particular species per unit area. That is what is population density and it is represented by capital N. In a given area, per unit area can be per square meter, per square kilometer depending upon which organism we want to study. If we are talking about a very tiny organism say in a laboratory condition, then maybe just uh, the unit area would be smaller. But if we are talking about humans, maybe we will use kilometer per square kilometer area can become the unit. So how many organisms of a particular species are found in that unit area would give us the density. And based on this, we find out which state is most densely populated, which state is least densely populated. So if the area is say 100 square kilometers and in that 100 square kilometers, say there are only 1000 people staying and in another place, same area, but say there are 10 lakh people staying. So per unit area, the organisms would become more. And that is what we mean by population density. The next attribute is population growth. Now, how is this population going to grow? There are four major factors which, which are responsible for this particular thing. So if a particular area has a population, so we call that population density of that area. There are two things by which population or organisms can get added to the existing one and there are two by which the organisms can be removed from the existing group. Let us talk about two things first. One is the birth. It is known as natality. Natality means number of organisms born per thousand. So if this is more, that means there are more and more birds, then the individuals would get added to the existing population. And if the number of organisms dying from the group is talked about, then we will use the word mortality. So here number of organisms, individuals dying per thousand. So this is mortality. So one adds organisms and one eliminates organisms. Now there are two more things. One which would add organisms into it that is immigration and one which, which would eliminate would be termed as emigration. So if from other countries say people keep coming into one country, say India we are talking about. So if there are more and more immigrants into this population, the population is going to grow. And if there are people moving out of India, then the population would decrease. So there are two things which would add into the existing population and two which would remove from the existing population. It is going to be the birth rate or natality and immigration which would add and mortality and emigration would work, which would remove and the sum of this would give us what is happening to the existing population and that would decide what is going to be the growth of this population 
and next that we will talk of we'll take that up in two parts one we will talk about the basics and then we'll come to the technical thing the next attribute is actually the growth models we'll talk about the technical parts later but we need to understand what exactly we mean by these growth models if we are talking about growth of say bacteria in a lab condition in a laboratory condition where we are providing these bacteria or microbes all conditions nourishment is provided by us optimum temperature optimum ph everything is provided by us then the growth model or the growth pattern which we would see is initially there would be a slow increase and then the population would just go on increasing because we are supplying them all what they need this is possible in laboratory condition now initially say there is a petri dish where we provide this uh, nutritive medium and we bring in some microbes and that is why the graph is little lower these microbes <clears throat> they are going to adapt to this condition once they get adapted their number that means now they start to reproduce their number increases initially it is slower and then when they reproduce this petri dish becomes smaller you transfer them to a bigger that means now you are providing them with more space more nutrition everything what they need so there is nothing which is going to limit their growth so the growth curve which we would get is a j shaped growth curve this is possible only in lab conditions where we provide them everything this is not the case in nature in nature when organisms uh, start inhabiting a particular place so again they come to a particular place they start living there they adapt to those conditions once they get adapted to those conditions their number is going to increase so this line goes up but in nature something is going to become a limiting factor either resources become limited like food resource or space may become limited so something in nature will always become a limiting factor and as something becomes limiting the growth becomes steady that means a stage would come where the number of individuals getting added into the population and getting eliminated from the population is pretty much same because there is something which is a limiting factor so here we get s shaped growth curve and this curve is in nature it is also known as sigmoid growth curve we'll talk about the technical things as well as the equations by which we can find out what type of growth is seen in a particular population but there are only two possibilities either j shaped growth curve is seen this is possible only when everything is available in plenty and nothing becomes a limiting factor whereas in case of natural process where any population grows in nature something is definitely going to become a limiting factor so in nature we always find a sigmoid growth curve or s shaped growth curve so these are the two growth curves and in the next part we'll take up the same parameter or attribute that is growth model and we'll try to study these two types of graphs in a technical manner